Hi, thanks for tuning in. It's been a while since we've spent any time with our CRX, actually since we first received it. We did a couple videos and it's taken until now for us to do the set of test prints. So we're going to discuss and uh, investigate those today. So in one of the initial videos on the CRX, I was describing how I was having difficulty with bed adhesion. Uh, it was suggested in the comments that I up the bed temperature to 70 or even slightly above. And I did that and it helped a little bit, but I still ended up needing glue stick. I'm not exactly sure what was uh, the problem with that. But on this first print, I had no issues at all with bed adhesion. It's just a simple butterfly printed in place, two colors. And being that it's not very high and has a lot of surface area, I didn't have any problem with it coming loose. You end up having a purge block equal in height to the item. Uh, and in this case, the purge block is rather small in comparison to the, the object itself. And you'll see that that's not always the case. When we're done here describing some of the print quality, uh, we're going to grab the scale and we're gonna check how much the item weighs versus how much we had in waste. Um, so in this, the, the butterfly, there's really no print quality issues at all to speak of. The vase was another story. Um, there's a little bit of inconsistent extrusion layer by layer. This is just the, the raft. That was part of the G-code. Uh, but there's inconsistent extrusion, a little bit of drooping and blobbing at the ends. Um, and in this case here, there's like an entire layer here missing almost. Um, I'm not sure if something got snagged. I didn't really have the normal height clearance I do on my shelves with my printer, so I moved the uh, spools to the side and as it was there was also almost no space so it very well could have got caught up on something. I could check the uh, time lapse to kind of get a better indication of what happened there but other than that it's kind of a nifty print. It's a, got some neat details to it but I'm not really happy with the quality of that. Uh, I'm also not happy with how much waste there was uh, and again it's kind of hard to tell because the purge block is a lot more dense but it feels at least like there's a lot more waste um, I could tune the waste, the purge amount per layer, uh, if I was slicing this myself, this was Creality's provided slices, but I could tune this a little bit to hopefully cut down on the waste, uh, but you always run the risk, especially when going from like the uh, red to the yellow, that you haven't purged out all of the, um, all of the red uh, when you're switching to the yellow if you shrink this at all. Then we've got a little package here. Again, uh, I've got kind of inconsistent extrusion, um, almost looks like banding um, layer by layer. And there's also kind of raised little globs, um, which is, I've had issues with this in the past with some of my Bowden printers. At the corners, you kind of end up with bulgy corners. Well, we have that here, bulgy corners. And in this case, the corner of the red and the corner of the yellow, they're also bulging out. So it creates like a large raised zipper type effect down the side. Uh, the top finish was very good. Um, there's probably a little bit more overlap with the walls than is necessary, so it kind of creates a raised ridge um, where the infill overlaps the wall on each of the colors. Um, but the center of them is perfectly fine and the bottom was fantastic with a light little texture because of this coating that they have on the glass. And again, purge block equal in height. And in this case, because the item's a little bit kind of stouter um, or wider, if you will, uh, they're about equal. And then this little guy is from the Pangolin. So this is the Pangolin model that you may have seen on Thingiverse from Arao, I think, A-R-A-O. Uh, Creality has taken it upon themselves to remove his name and add Creality 3D to the side of it. But again, we see there's kind of inconsistent extrusion layer by layer, there's a little bit of banding. Um, and in this case, uh, there was a few little globs that will scratch off so they're just kind of drooling from the extruder uh, and this one doesn't have any legs um, like the normal one does uh, but other than that I mean it's kind of a neat print I've always found this to be a neat model um, this one doesn't quite bend as flexibly as I'd hoped um, but nonetheless you get a lot of object printed for a rather small amount of waste or purge um, and again, simply because that's, you have to purge each layer. So we have a very wide item, but not a whole lot of Z height to it. So without further ado, let's grab the scale. 
and let's see how much each of these weighed. So the uh, butterfly, which is probably the best print by far out of these, is 30 grams, and his little purge block here is eight. For the vase, being that it's not quite as hollow as a normal vase, there is some kind of meat to the outside shell there. The vase is 56 grams, and the purge is 106 grams. So it's almost double what the object itself used in filament. The package, we're at 46 grams, and then the purge for the package is 48. So they're basically equal, as I kind of thought they were. And then the pangolin. So this guy, a lot of material there, that's probably a 30-ish hour print, if memory serves me right, is 140 grams. And his purge block, let's take the uh, raft off so we're not skewing the results, though it doesn't weigh much. That's about as good as it's gonna get. It's not really coming off. It's 58 grams. So we're looking at almost three times the amount of material in the object versus the purge. Uh, so there you have it. That's kind of the initial prints, first impressions on the Creality sliced G-code, which in an ideal situation would be the best result you're going to get. You'd think that they would take the time to make sure that they've dialed in those settings correctly. We may have some mechanical things to deal with here. We may want to calibrate our extruders, make sure that those are perfectly accurate. Um, I may want to take a look at the lead screws here, especially this one. Um, there's a little bit of dark staining on it and uh, if memory serves me right, it was making a little bit of a noise. Um, so I'm not sure if that's introducing artifacts into the prints, but I'll probably give that a clean and lubricate that. Uh, and then give it another shot with my own G-code, likely starting with kind of a similar profile that I would use on something like a CR-10 with a similar Bowden setup. Hopefully you found that informative. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when we upload more content. Thanks for watching.